the uh, ground lift, um, the um, the ability for people who um, you know whether people who don't drive will be able to use the the road, and the amendment. I want to be clear does stipulate that funding um, is spent according to the design chosen by the task force. Um, so we've had some questions. I, you know, I had posted kind of a graphic that um, showed one option. The intent really wasn't to say that we've already made a decision. Um, and the language itself does intend that this task force will identify um, will identify the preference. So I just want to make sure that's clear. Um, what I will say is that um, there have been 29 collisions. Uh, on this stretch of Lake Washington Boulevard in the last 20 years or so, 11 uh, since 2017. Um, and so the goal here really is to make sure that the road is safe, um, not just for drivers, but for people who cannot drive or choose not to, and who still want to be able to have access to the boulevard. Um, so, you know, that's that's the goal here. Um, and really the vision for, for transportation in South Seattle um, is to make sure that we are addressing road safety um, for everyone. Uh, we have a lot of people in South Seattle who have disabilities. Uh, Non-drivers also include children, uh, include people who are elderly. And um, so we really just need to make sure that there is an opportunity for folks to enjoy their neighborhoods, to be able to navigate their neighborhoods safely um, and to be able to have access uh, where, where people don't, some people don't have access right now. Um, so uh, maybe I will stop there. Um, uh, I guess the, the last thing I do want to say is, um, you know, we are, um, my office is in pretty regular communication with, uh, with SDOT, with Sound Transit, with, um, you know, Seattle Neighborhood Greenways, uh, with organizations that represent people with um, mobility issues. Um, if there are folks uh, who are here or uh, who, are not in regular communication, who we aren't in regular communication with, I'm happy to um, make sure that we are setting time to be able to hear your point of view or hear your concerns and make sure that everybody's um, included, not just in this conversation with the task force, but included in the kinds of things that we're hearing in our office as well. So probably, thank you, Councilman Morales. Probably what we'll do is we'll do, um, if you raise your hand, I'll call on you and then We'll go one question at a time and then we'll come back around to you if you have a second question. Does that work? Okay. Now, folks, don't be shy, <laughs> Teresa. <laughs> Tracy, we see your hand raised. I don't know if you're just uh, not on mute. Sorry. Go. I said, hello, everyone. Hello, council member. My first question is, do you feel that this look at Lake Washington Boulevard area has been fair and equitable and has been listening to everyone in the community? Uh, well, I will say that this, there's been a few iterations of community engagement um, and uh, in the last year or so, I know that um, SDOT has reached out to, um, for example, Rainier Valley Greenways, um, to the uh, Disability Mobility Initiative and others to try to get um, a broad uh, spectrum of opinions and, and perspectives as they're having these conversations. As have I, um, you know, we've tried to connect to different um, kind of stakeholder groups. Um, and part of the intent behind funding for this task force was to make sure that if there were folks who had been left out previously, that there was, um, you know, a very explicit attempt to, um, 
to bring in those who may have been left out of the previous conversations. I don't claim that it was a perfect process, but I do think that there has been a real effort to bring as many voices as possible to the table. Can I piggyback on that or should I wait till the sure. next one? Oh, uh, well, I'm... Um, I, let's see if somebody else wants to raise their hand. There we go. Uh, Yuan, you have your hand up. Hi, Council Member Morales. Uh, it's great to have you here. Um, I. I know what you said was probably um, just like briefly went over some of the questions that I probably submitted around um, the communication between all the offices. Um, I do remember last time when I talked to Adonis about the funding that you um, that you passed during the amendment that there seemed to be some confusion. Um, around SDOT where Adonis, I think you said that y'all hadn't been reached out to. Um, the Seattle bike blog seemed to suggest that Lake Washington Boulevard is, is actually under Seattle Parks and Rec's purview. And so I, I just want some clarification around who makes the decisions around Lake Washington Boulevard. What is Parks and Rec's role? What is SDOT's role? Um, and whether or not we can be assured that there will be more communication moving forward. Um, I know that you said that you're, you're in a lot of communication with organizations and, and SDOT, but I think I just haven't seen that. Um, and, I, um, and I know that Zach added on, Zachary Fleet, you added, um, if the recent leadership changes in SDOT and Seattle Parks will affect this process. That was a lot, I know. Thanks very much. Yeah, well, um, uh, maybe I will ask the departments to help respond to that. Um, since, you know, this is uh, a, a boulevard we're talking about. It's, it's, you know, a road, a transportation corridor um, and it abuts park land. And so maybe, um, I don't know, Mike, uh, if you want to start, and then we can we can ask the SDOP folks to respond. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy to um, jump in here because I know this is a question that was brought up um, previous to the the session, and we we uh, we saw those. And so, Lake Washington Boulevard um, is an interesting type of street, as it's a street arterial, and it's it actually has joint jurisdiction. Um, as a, as a designated park boulevard, there's a boulevard agreement between parks and SDOT that kind of governs the, the maintenance and divvies up um, roles and responsibilities for it. And so um, as we have in the past with the uh, previous leadership, as the leadership has changed, we're gonna continue to work together with SDOT parks is our, our new superintendent, AP Diaz, uh, I'm sure will be starting to meet more regularly with uh, the new SDOT director, with uh, direct, director spots. And um, so we look forward to that. I think um, we're already prepping them that we anticipate there will be a need for a meeting in January as the task force comes, uh, as it concludes and makes its recommendations. Um, we're, we're planning to get them together and, and take a look at those together. And anything that we do will be in coordination as it has been over the last few years. And I know people don't see it in the background. We definitely um, meet fairly regularly. It, it was every month and we, we've reduced that now, but um, Sutton Parks has a lot of overlap and we have um, a lot of need for collaborating not only on Lake Washington Boulevard, but at a lot of other sites throughout the city. So uh, I don't wanna go into too much more detail than that, but um, hopefully that answers your question sufficiently. And Jim or anybody else, that if you wanna build on that, please, please feel free. Yeah, I'll jump in, Mike. Thank you very much. Appreciate you uh, explaining the, uh, the jurors, uh, the, the multiple folks who are overseeing Lake Washington Boulevard, let's, let's call it that. Um, you know, from a leadership perspective, you know, Greg Spots, our new director has been with us for a little more than a month now. And I think um, Greg's really excited about, um, you know, bringing much needed safety uh, to, um, you know, all parts of the city. Uh, but he's really well aware that D2 has, District 2, I should say, has uh, seen its 
uh, more than its fair share of, of bad crashes over the years. And so there is an interest in enhancing safety, particularly in that part of the city. Uh, and, you know, he really wants us and he's directed us, he's told us he wants us to co-create projects with the community. And I think this task force is, uh, you know, a really great uh, opportunity for us to, to show him how we can do that uh, by working with, you know, stakeholders from across uh, the area um, to hear their voices and hear what they'd like to see Lake Washington. Juan, does that um, help answer your question? Yes. Well, uh, I just want to clarify, does that mean that SDOT and Parks and Rec have to agree on how to move forward before anything can happen? Pretty yeah. much, yes. <laughs> I, I, would, I, I would think so, yes. And I think mm -hmm. that that meeting is going to have to take place and they'll, they'll have to be consensus reached. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for the question. And Zach, I see your hand up. Uh, good afternoon. So I, I, I'm here as a representative of the, the Mount Baker Community Club. And one of the things that this task force has sort of talked about, but we haven't followed up on much is, um, uh, well, first of all, thank you for advocating for, for your district. And we're hoping that something is going to come out positive for Southeast Seattle. What we had a little discussion about was quote unquote thinking big, like what can really be done? Like, is this a point in which we could really access some significant resources in an area that typically doesn't get much resources? And what we haven't been able to do is access either SDOT or Parks or someone else to maybe be able to give us an overview of possibilities. For example, if there was the ability to have some sort of major project that involved a two-way bike lane, that sounds great. We don't know if there's room on the west side of Lake Washington Boulevard to create that sort of space. We don't know if that's an impossible suggestion on our part. And I'm wondering if there's at this juncture, as we're first doing outreach, but later going to be coming up with ways to potentially uh, accomplish what's being asked for? Will there be an opportunity for us to get input about uh, uh, enlarging our dreams, if that makes sense? And in that is supposed to be a question of, can we solicit maybe design parameters, even if they're larger than the 200 or the 404,000 are currently able to to uh, you know sustain. If that makes sense. We'll try to initially answer that question, and I will let Jim take it from there. Um, so Zach, we as we mentioned before, we're in the planning phase of all of this, and so we're collecting the information. What's the big vision? The next phase after this is the design, and that's when the designers get in there and then they look at things like space and room and, and what it would take to make the recommendations that come out of this task force a reality. Um, and then there's a whole nother outreach component associated with that. I'm not sure if there'll be one option or four options that get presented to the community of like, hey, here's what we heard, here's what we can do, and here's three different options of what we can do, here's the trade-offs of those options. Um, that's typically how those things work. And then, then we would move to construction further down the line. So, um, but I'll pass it over to Jim. Uh, Donis, you, you answered that question perfectly well. I think, you know, that that's the purpose of this, right? Is to actually like think, uh, think big about like Washington Boulevard. And if, uh, if there is an alternative that the community wants us to vet, then, you know, we will, we will do so in subsequent phases of the project. Obviously, I think, there are some slopes we're contending with on, on Lake Washington Boulevard that make things uh, a little bit more challenging. Um, and I think as we um, as, as we move from planning into design, we'll be able to more accurately uh, determine whether or not uh, some of the uh, design elements that I think you're thinking about are feasible or not. 
I want to follow up because I think what I also heard uh, Zach asking about is how this task force would be provided the, correct me if I'm wrong, Zach, um, the information, the data that could help uh, craft what that big vision could be. Um, uh, or, you know, at least provide like what are the outside parameters of, of what could be what could be considered. Um, and I don't know if that's already been baked into the process or if that is kind of an um, another step that would need to be taken in order for the task force to really kind of broaden their vision of what could be possible. I mean, we have the resources at SDOT to provide um, general information about uh, what we're facing out there from an existing perspective, uh, existing conditions perspective. Uh, we have uh, geotechnical engineers on staff that can uh, provide us with some guidance. Um, although, you know, we ha we have to, you know, use caution with that because it won't be. Uh, I, I don't believe we have the resources to do a thorough uh, geotechnical review of the slopes on the corridor at this time. Okay. I'll I'll echo that too. Um, you know, parks if can be involved, and we could bring somebody from our engineering and design team uh, to kind of talk through, so that um, you're not getting to the point of of advancing design options that um, may be totally infeasible. We don't we don't want you to go too far down that road, um, and so we're happy to help provide a little bit of guidance on that as well. I, certainly, the steep slopes are a consideration. Also, it being in Olmsted Boulevard is uh, also a consideration. So we'd have to have to look at those and and talk both of those through with you. So I want to be um, conscious of time here. It's four twenty four. Clara, you have your hand up. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Um, so. You've mentioned a few times the work group recommendations for design and for um, how we want to move forward on Lake Washington Boulevard. And um, we as a work group up until now have generally been occupied with uh, like the community outreach planning and have sort of struggled a little bit to find where the lines are for our authority as a task force. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm wondering if you can just speak a little bit about uh, like what your office is expecting to come out of the other side of this process in early 2023, or what would be valuable for us to have like as a deliverable to you or final product to your office. Um, and maybe it would be helpful for you to hear that answer from SDOT folks as well. Like, are we looking for something like vague with who we want to accommodate and for what purpose? Or are we looking for something like a, a recommended street design or something in between? Or like what, what are the expectation is there? Yeah, well, I'll start with sort of the technical answer and then we can uh, hear from the departments about what that means in terms of implementation. Um, and I will acknowledge that, um, you know, council is sometimes in the habit of, um, requesting things from the department without a clear understanding of how they will implement and sometimes without a clear understanding of how the executive will implement either. So um, so just so everybody is clear, the, the language, the actual text um, says that the funds allocated in 23 and 24, uh, $202,000 would be designated um, for material and construction costs for a new protected path, um, which presumes that by the time we get to this uh, time of next year, there is a plan, something has been identified, there is a preferred alternative um, that the group uh, you know, wants to see built. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, the point of the task force was to, as I was saying before, sort of make sure that folks who weren't included in previous engagement um, had a chance to be involved in the discussion, had a chance to be involved in the sort of vetting of ideas. Um, but yeah, the, the goal is that we can actually start to implement a project next year. Um, and so, you know, I would be interested in hearing from the departments your perspective on 
the feasibility of that or you know what steps need to happen uh, between now and then in order to get to that point yeah i think um i think we're on the same page uh council member morales i think we want uh to come out of this task force with a vision for the corridor and you know specifically an alternative that we can then uh you know determine um you know what it'll take uh what it'll cost uh to build it um so you know depending on what the vision is for the corridor uh, i think really uh is the crucial element for the schedule moving forward right if we're thinking about a big large capital project as, as, as had uh, been brought up earlier then our timeline is definitely going to be a little bit longer right we'll need to um you know do all the uh the engineering and um secure funds right we'll, we'll need to go out and get a lot of funding for that for sure um and we'll have to you know face all those engineering design challenges as we as we work through the project if we're if we're looking for something that um uh doesn't require uh a, a large scale capital project if we're looking for some uh way to use the space that we have out there today differently uh then i think you know moving forward and getting uh started within the next year is more realistic um but you know it does take time we want to make sure that we uh get the design right uh we want to make sure that we're working with the community uh whenever we reach certain design milestones to make sure that we're on the right track and if we need to address you know we can do that as well so it does it does take a little time uh to get to um uh the point where we're we've got a green light and we're ready to to go out there and and build things but um uh, so there, there's there's a couple of different ways that this could go, um, but I, I think the task force, you know, first and foremost, should be, you know, really thinking uh, thoughtfully about, you know, what what are we going to do with this great this great piece of land that we have on the waterfront, and how can we how can we make it better for everybody? And I'll just uh, piggyback on this. I know we've got one minute left, but Claire, if the actual physical product will be a report. Um, that says here's the outreach that we did and based on that outreach and the survey you as a task force are going to make a recommendation um, for how to move forward and what that vision is and what we should pursue um, and that will all be in the report and then early next year we will have an open house to just reconfirm with the community that that's what they said and here's what we're moving forward with and that's what gets um, that's what we'll get moved forward uh so we've got it's 4 30. um i do want to respect the council members time if that is your time yeah i can uh, maybe take one more question and then yeah i probably do need to hop off okay there's so, another teresa you've had your hand up okay i want to just get the question in there about um the, the um, american with disabilities act title II um and closing the road off um, for access to disabled um citizens is a violation of that it's a civil rights violation and there have been many people who are upset about it um because i you said that you reached out to several groups and, and stuff in the beginning but unfortunately the groups that you reached out to seem to be um one-sided and favored and uh, and they didn't represent the, the issue well in the facebook groups and when people with disabilities spoke up and talked about their point of view they were told me especially to move somewhere else um the biker lobbyists some of the people in there were really rude so people are upset about it and i want to know how do you address their feelings that their civil rights are being violated and that they have no other option than filing complaints to the DOG because their voices have been ignored. How do you address that population? Because that does include seniors who, who um, can't walk real, but can drive or ride with other people and they're feeling that their rights are being denied. How do you, how do you address that population? Yeah, that's a good question, uh, and I appreciate you bringing that up. Accessibility is uh, extremely important uh, for SDOT. Um, 
uh, the ADA program is housed within the group that I oversee, um, and we uh, are working really hard to um, to improve uh, the way that we do business and to ensure that we're providing um, you know safe and comfortable access to all the city's facilities. Um, and I know this is this is a, a very interesting uh, you know question that comes up, um, and you know I think that's one of the things that we need to sort sort out as part of this uh, this visioning process is what does it mean uh, if we are going to change the way Lake Washington Boulevard operates for people who um, you know are using mobility devices or uh, might have some other mobility challenges. So um, so I think I think you know we would encourage you all to uh, to continue to, uh, to 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 think about things from that perspective as we move forward right i mean um, i think um, our our intent is to make sure that the boulevard and all of the city facilities along uh, the roadway are open and accessible to 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 everyone right um, so you know i think as we move into uh design and as we you know have that vision like there will there will be numerous occasions where we're going to need to work with uh the disability rights community to make sure that we do have things right uh out there um because it's not an option for us to provide a facility that is not accessible i just want to be super clear about that we will make this accessible to all that's Mayor morales you want to have the last word on this yeah. Uh, well, thank you, Jim. Um, I guess the last thing I'll say, Teresa, is I know you and I have had this conversation before. Um, you know, as Jim said, we we have to make sure that folks have access to this road. Um, so if there, if you or some group that you're involved with um, has not been part of these conversations, um, you know, let's make sure that you know we we do have. Uh, disability mobility initiative on here. If there's another group that you think should be included, happy to make sure those folks get included too. And I know you and I will probably continue to be in conversation about this. Um, so uh, thank you for raising the question again. And um, we will keep working on making sure that um, that everybody is able to access this really incredible gem that we have in the South End. Thank you, council member. Um, Thank you, everybody. Appreciate you. Bye. So Mike is still here from the Parks Department. Um, if folks have any other questions, um, and Jim is here too, uh, for uh, the next, we'll be taking a break here in about 10 minutes. Um, but if you all don't have any other questions, we could take an earlier break and get started on our Oh, the hands flew up. Um, <laughs> uh, let's start with Aaron. No break. <laughs> mm -mm. Well, if I'm looking at this screen right, Zach, Terry, and I all and Patricia all hit it exactly the same time. Yeah. <laughs> so my my one question is: um, so I have a background as a builder, uh, both civil and and commercial, and I am am. I want to know, um, especially from Jim, what is the feasibility of literally just shutting down one of the lanes of the of Lake Washington Boulevard so that it's only one way traffic, and and specifically, if we had two way bike lanes on that, is Seattle required? You know, use up one of the lanes as a two way bike lane. Is Seattle required to have? A running lane, um, you know, like or a or a rolling lane besides those bike lanes. I mean, I just I I guess what I'm asking about is what the policies are for SDOT as far as uh, mobility is concerned for you know for for those kind of options. Do we, you know, would it would we have to? Could we fit whatever we need to fit in one road lane? You know, I I think that. Um... I, I I don't know that um, I've got an answer for that question right now. Um, I think that you guys need to work this out through the visioning process and uh, and bring your recommendations to us at this point. Um, um, 
you know, that that's why we're here, right? But, um, right, but if we've got eight feet or eight and a half feet or whatever it is for that one lane, is there requirements to actually have bike lane, bike lane, you know, going north and south and a pedestrian lane? Or can we use the path? Can we re resurface the path and use that as a pedestrian lane instead of taking up other space with, uh, you know, the, the space of the lane itself with a bike lane? Oh, sorry. Okay, I'm unmuted. Um, yeah, I mean, again, like I, th I think that um, you know, those are questions that you're gonna you're gonna need to answer as the process goes on. Um, I, you know, as far as like uh, the requirements are concerned, there's there's a whole host of things that uh, we need to do, and accessibility is the most important. The ADA accessibility, as we mentioned earlier, um, and so that's I think what we would want to turn our attention to uh, primarily. Um, uh, and and I think yeah you'll you'll all you'll all get into that I think um, as part of the visioning task force here so I think you know I would encourage you all to to explore that as the process moves on. I, I get that, but like Zach brought up before, there if there are concrete limitations on what we can do with a limited amount of space with a certain amount of space, then that would guide us in our recommendations. So we, we need to know as part of this, not just what the pipe dream would be, but what we can physically accomplish with that space. Well, oh, sorry, Jim. Um, to just jump in super quick, I think, I, I hear you, Aaron and, um, and Zach. It's like, well, what is possible? You don't wanna make a recommendation on something that's totally impossible because then it feels like that's kind of like a waste of a recommendation and time. Um, but at the same time, um, I think it is important to know what the, you know, after the survey comes back and the outreach that we do and the recommendation that you all make, if that is somewhere that the task force lands on, um, you shouldn't let that preclude you from making that recommendation because we just don't know if it's possible or not um, until we know exactly what it is the recommendation is, right? Um, because there's I'm not an engineer, I'm not a designer, but I'm sure there are a number of ways to make something happen. And it may not look like exactly what you have in your mind right now at this moment, but there is probably a way to make it happen, but there will be trade-offs and there will be this and there'll be that and those different options are presented. So I think that's why it's kind of hard to answer the question right now. And, but that should not preclude this task force from making the recommendation that they want to make, that they, um, if that makes sense. I don't know if I got that right, Jim. That makes sense, Adonis. Thank yeah, you. That's exactly right. Um, Terry, you have your hand up. Yeah, um, this is addressed mostly to Mike. And Mike, it's nice to see your face. <laughs> um, so two things. One, one is um, I have been frustrated thus far that Parks has not been at the table at all the task force standard meetings. This, there's a lot of meetings that occur that are in staff, but our monthly meetings, we, I felt that it was unfortunate that we didn't have Parks participation. So I'm hoping that, and Adana suggested in the last meeting that here in the, as in the future that Parks will have staff present at our task force meetings. And I think that that is something I would like to re respectfully request on a regular basis. Um, the second is that um, in the MPD's research that was done regarding uh, how to fund things in the city generally, the pathway along the boulevard was a pretty high priority um, recommendation in the MPD um sort of guiding document so what i'm curious about is we we're talking about monies that were designated for specifically the roadway but i'm i need to know i'd like to know if there's any uh, guidance uh, coming out of the mpd in terms of funding for the path terry i'm i'm happy to be a little bit more involved, I, I want you to know, and I've mentioned this earlier, that uh, 
we absolutely continue to meet regularly with SDOT. I get updates on what's happening with the task force. And, um, you know, it's SDOT's certainly been leading the effort on this. And, um, and we'll have that coordination step as the recommendations kind of come out of the end of the process. Um, in terms of uh, MPD funding, we're taking a look at the six year cycle and what is included in that and making work plans to um, parse that out over the span of the six years. And I think as we get a little bit deeper into the park district and um, what exactly is included, I'll have a better understanding of uh, what is possible. I do know, in especially in terms of the um, relationship to the path, um, I do know that we have um, our small paving program, which is modest, um, that has been gradually, incrementally been um, addressing small segments of the pathway adjacent to the boulevard, um, trying to address root heave. And unfortunately, uh, in this day and age, we would never allow uh, that pathway to be constructed the way it is with the proximity of significant trees to a pathway because it's so difficult to um, maintain. I think we're doing the best we can to try and keep up with that and and gradually chip away um, small segments at a time as as a maintenance project. And so um, we're it's on our list and we're definitely making uh, slow progress at it. And that's um, as we take a look at the MPD, we might be able to accelerate that progress moving forward. So that's hopefully that answers your, your questions and. Well, it's, it would be good to have that input as part of our decision process. So um, the more information we can have on that, the better. So um, we are coming up on 445. We've got a minute. I, Patricia, I see your hand. Zach, I see your hand. And Teresa, I see your hand up. Um, real quick, Mike, can you let the folks know what MPD means for those that don't? Met Metropolitan Park District. Perfect. Um, so we've got time for some super quick ones. Um, and then I know Jim's got to go, Mike's got to go, and we have to move on to the next. Um, got to take a break before we move on to the next thing. So Patricia, uh, you've had your hand up. And I'm so sorry. I have no idea what it was at this point. So I'll defer to, to the next person. <laughs> okay. Uh, Zach, real quick, you got a quick one. Thanks, quick. And this will probably be for them to follow up with this later. But parks is part of our big vision process. And one of the things was what improvements to facilities could be done along Lake Washington Boulevard. Mm -hmm. uh, there was this plan to update the boathouse with six separate um, uh, stations for people to bathe and other things. Is, is, is that still on track? Is that something we should know about as we look to what facilities might be helpful at mount baker beach yeah yes that that um can you just get us the info somehow so that yep. we would know that'd be great perfect and teresa you got a quick one for us I and i remembered we'll pack and go first <laughs> okay yeah no i um i just wanted to ask because we, we we've had some some inquiries I actually also just today just resubmitted another survey report. Um, and so the concern that has come to me um, I, is that um, it still people seems like people tend to surveys. survey multiple times. We'll address that at the end of the meeting, Patricia. Teresa? Okay, has Parks done any recent feasibility studies on what it would take to expand existing trail from Mount Baker? Beach to Seward Park. And before you answer that, um, I would like a way to talk to both um, Parks and SDOT leadership about the um, safety street. I know it's not a part of like Washington. Stay Boulevard. healthy streets. Yep, we can, yeah. we, can, we can put you in touch with the right people for those. Um, for the lane closures um, throughout the neighborhoods. Okay, but that my, I read my question about the feasibility studies. The, the quick answer is is no, there has not been a feasibility uh, conducted to expand uh, the width of the um, the trail adjacent to the boulevard. All right, so uh, you'll follow up on the Mount Baker Beach, Mike, and then Patricia, we will talk about the survey. 
uh, in our updates at the end of the meeting. Um, and really want to thank Mike and Jim for being here and the council member. Um, it's been super helpful. Thank you both. Uh, and then uh, I guess we will take a quick five minute bathroom break and come back. Let me look at the agenda, make sure I got this right. Eh, well, we're supposed to, we'll come back in like three minutes at 4.50. <laughs>